confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is a concept developed by psychologists in the mid-20th century before they had any idea that fMRI, functional magnetic resonance imaging, which shows brain activity in real time, would experimentally verify the concept thanks to technology. Confirmation bias is the tendency for people to favor information which confers pre-existing beliefs and preconceptions regardless of whether or not that information is true. These beliefs are found in the orbital frontal co cortex, the emotional portion of the brain. Critical thinking, logic, inductive, and deductive reasoning take place in the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. Under fMRI brain scans, the orbital frontal cortex lights up when emotions are being processed. The dorsolateral prefrontal cortex lights up when a person is thinking logically. Where I start with a question, not with the answer. The experiments give me the proof, not your friend Aristotle. Nonsense. All truth is revealed in the ancients. Then study the ancients, not just one of them. Look to the Pythagoreans. Slaves of the multiplication table. Lord, when information which supports a belief is presented, the emotional becomes active, as well as the thinking section as they think about the evidence that they agree with. But, seek after it in Holy Mother Church. When evidence or ideas contrary to the belief is presented, the emotional area lights up brightly and the thinking area region becomes quiet. Neuroimaging results on a PC versus Mac fanatics, staunch Republicans versus staunch Democrats during presidential debates, and people of various religious beliefs clearly shows clearly shows that we seek and find confirmatory evidence in support of already existing beliefs and ignore or reinterpret or discount disconfirmatory evidence that is contrary to our beliefs. Now for an example of confirmation bias from the historically accurate award-winning film Galileo, The Challenge of Reason. Senor Galilei knows more than his science. Senor Galilei pretends to know too much. Uh, Maestro, do you have any new, what you call them, experiments to show us? Oh, yes, senor, please. Let us see some of your truths. Let us say we drop the orange and the grape. Which will reach the table first? Well, the orange, of course. With the orange, it's much heavier. Do you agree with the ladies, your lordship? Of course, the orange will fall faster. Because Aristotle says that heavier objects fall faster than lighter objects. Correct, and we can see that the orange is much heavier. And if the orange is, well, let us say, 20 times heavier than the grape, when it reaches the table, the grape will only have fallen 1 20th as far. Correct? Yes. yes so says Aristotle. <laughs> and common sense. And if the orange and the grape reach the table at the same time, what of Aristotle? Signor Galilei, what of common sense? Then, according to our present mode of science, we need not even drop the orange and the grape to prove that the orange will fall faster. Correct. We merely look to Aristotle, who tells us that heavier objects fall faster, and take it for a fact, and we may put the fruit away. And that you call science? Absolutely. Well, let's drop them anyway, just for fun. And that is what you call science? Let us see. Let me try. Oh, oh, let me. Would you care to try, Your Lordship? Absolutely not. I see no reason to drop fruit on the table to prove a point. Neither did Aristotle. Or he could never have written that uh, heavier objects fall faster. <laughs> oh, bravo, Galileo, bravo. Conceits, pleasant enough after a good dinner, but hardly science. I understand your feeling. It is difficult to challenge the philosopher, considering he has written on all divisions of natural philosophy. 
so methodically and so completely without omitting a single conclusion. Take the moon, for instance. What says Aristotle? The moon is unchanging, smooth and polished as a looking glass, and thus reflects the sun's light. What says Galileo? I say, let us look through the eyeglass, which brings it 40 times closer to us. Since all truth is in the philosopher, and since you claim the eyeglass adds to truth, Aristotle would have mentioned it. Thus, since he did not mention it or make use of it, it can in no way be considered truth. Your logic is perfect, a tribute to your master. But he reminds me of the famous surgeon in Venice who claimed that the nerves of the body stem from the brain, not from the heart, as Aristotle wrote. This surgeon dissected a corpse and showed the great trunk of nerves coming from the brain, proceeding through the neck and on to the backbone. The surgeon asked the Aristotelian if he were now satisfied that the nerves stem from the brain, having just seen it. The Aristotelian pondered a minute and answered, you have shown me this business so plainly and so simply that did not the text of Aristotle tell me differently, I would have to admit that your opinion is true. <laughs> it is the same with the scholars who argue that uh, my Medicean stars do not exist. If your stars actually are there, Aristotle would have mentioned them. You mean, if they are there, your crystal spheres cannot be there. And the universe is no longer a glass cage, but an infinite space through which the earth and the stars move about. Signor Galilei, you transform man from the center of the universe to the outskirts. Do you think God would send the most precious fruit of his labor to a minor star? Would God send his son to such a place? You degrade the earth. You degrade man. You are an enemy of man. I walk the earth and it is firm under my feet. It does not move. The truth is sometimes deceptive. I once looked down from the mast of a ship leaving harbor and thought, look there, the shore is moving. You degrade man. The earth is the center of all things and man is the center of the earth. And the eye of God is upon us and above us, affixed to their crystal shells, the lesser stars and the great sun, created to give light so that God might see us move about in praise of man. Your lordships, your lordships. The Aristotelian said, you have shown this business so plainly and so simply that did not the text of Aristotle tell me differently, I would have to admit your opinion is true. Authority trumps experience and reasoning. In 1633, Galileo saved his skin by recanting, but it took 189 years for the church to adopt the sun-centered universe. And 159 years later after that, the church forgives Galileo. It takes a long time sometimes to overcome confirmation bias. When evidence contrary to a person's belief causes the emotional part of the brain to shut down the logical part of the brain so that the evidence is either ignored or reinterpreted or discounted in favor of the belief. The orbital frontal cortex becomes active and the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex becomes inactive. That's confirmation bias. Lucretia! Lucretia! She looks this big, but she can't Overcoming confirmation bias. In my humble opinion, a starting point is to be skeptical whenever we want something to be true. Belief is self-convincing of its truthfulness. Each of the 313 recognized religions for tax purposes in the U.S. believes that its doctrines are true for exactly the same reasons that the others believe that their doctrines are true. Ask yourself, am I... Honestly, sincerely searching for the truth? If yes, apply critical thinking skills to the evidence which is contrary to your beliefs. This Galileo has discussed the forbidden view. The best way for a critical thinker to overcome confirmation bias is to introspectively examine your thought processes and be honest with yourself about the real reasons you are reaching conclusions and opinions. A critical thinker will not be attached to his or her opinions, but rather committed to the truth. And if you put confirmation bias in quotes, 
In Google, you'll get over 600,000 hits on the topic if you'd like to learn more about it. I thought of publishing a pamphlet on Copernicus myself. Uh, these are not the times to be taken in by a questioning mathematician. He's threatening our whole system of education. I say Galileo is more dangerous than Calvin or Luther. Because he asked me to think. <laughs>